That is a chunky fish. Does he fit in the frame? I'll try to get the hook into him, man. Try to get it out of that cover. Did he want it? I think so. That is a slab. Let's go fishing. People when you're in the mood. Let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala. Premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha. Conquer Outdoors. Defend Products. Eco-friendly protection from biting insects. Dickies. Quality workwear since 1922. Try to work them around yeah, the motor. Try to work them around the water. You got the hook in him good? Yep. Okay, good. Hook set. Awesome. He's little, but you know what? This is great for these conditions. Just bring him right around. And there we go. He goes. Nice pike. Oh, good it's pike. Job. Yeah. Beauty. You know, I'm, I'm here with Reagan Thompson. Reagan and Goldie own Mashkinan Lodge. And we're fishing on Nipissing's West Arm. And this is amazing. I've never seen so much structure and weed lines and weeds and everything. Good job. Now, I don't think this is the fish that I got a hit on on my crankbait inside. I'm just gonna be very careful to get this uh, treble hook out there. I'm gonna give you that you. and I'm gonna hold them up. Well, you know, this isn't a huge pike, but you know what? It's actually perfect eating size. And I, I think when your guests come up, and especially if they want a fresh fish lunch, this is perfect for them to eat, right? Absolutely, yep, very healthy size. Now here in the West Arm, what are the regulations for the Northerns? Uh, one over 24, four fish limit. Okay, good. So I wonder how long this is. How good are your guessing length? Oh, not great to tell, <laughs> but I would say uh, we're looking at roughly 21 inches. Wow, what do you think? Okay. Let's, let's measure well, it up. I, I, have an, I, have an accuracy, on that. I have an accuracy board right here. Okay. So I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to butt the nose of it right there. This is really handy. It goes up to 35 inches. You know what? He's 25 inches. He's a monster. <laughs> well done. Well, so we can't thanks. keep him. I want to do a recipe with pike that I'm going to share with you later if you come up to the cottages. But this guy's going to be released. So I'm just going to hold him in the water because we've had him out. You know, it's not a huge pike. When you get pike in the two foot range, there he goes. They're actually nice. Now, Reagan, how did you and Goldie get into the lodge business? I mean, you don't, it just doesn't happen overnight kind of thing. Well, no, uh, my uncle actually used to own a lodge in uh, Northwestern Ontario. And for okay. years as a young child, I'd go up there. Uh huh. And uh, after a while, Goldie and I decided that that's something that we'd really want to do. We, we love entertaining and uh, I love to fish, of course, in the outdoors. Now, of all the places in Ontario or Canada, there's lots of lakes with lodges. How did you end up on the Nipissing watershed? Well, Nipissing is only three and a half hours north of Toronto, which yep. is important because that means guests from south southeastern Ontario can get to us very easily. Yep. And uh, Lake Nipissing is one of the uh, most sought after fishing destinations in Ontario as well. I agree, winter and summer. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, great ice fishing in the winter and uh, all, many species uh, throughout the summer as well. Good, well I'm excited, you know, I, I've been spending the last couple of days pre-fishing here as you know, enjoying the great fishing and the great meals that your wife's prepared. And the, the, the fact that the cottages face west is awesome. They are beautiful Italo and the other great thing is facing west we get a nice breeze in the summertime, keeps the heat and humidity down. Perfect, perfect. Now I gotta show them the lure you got that on. Now, you know, I rely on good fishermen and like Reagan, who's been out with me pre-fishing the last couple of days. But I gotta tell you that we made a call to an old friend and it's a person that Reagan's used for quite a while to be a guide. His name is Danny Columbi. I'd say about 20 years ago, Danny used to do the music for the Canadian sport fishing show. So he moved up to North Bay and on many occasions, Reagan's had a chance to actually call on his services for his guests. And he gets into a lot of muskies. And Reagan called him this afternoon because we've had a terrible cold front go through. The temperature dropped 10 to 15 degrees. We've got a northeast wind, which is bad, bad, bad for fishing. It poured rain last night. 
Um, the water color changed, all the algae moved out. So it's a time that you would normally go fishing, but two crazy guys were gluttons for punishment. We thought we'd come out in the rain and everything. So Danny said, fish this bay. It's a good productive bay, and he's fished a lot of these pike tournaments. And he also said, use a spinner, either number five or number six. And what Reagan's got here, this is a number six Vibrex. It's actually called a Super Vibrex. It's got that big Colorado blade. The unique thing about the Vibrex is that it's got this nice body, but look, it's hollow and there's a gear inside. So when this is going through the water, that blade is going around, providing lots of flash, but also this body is hitting that gear that's spinning around. So it's making all kinds of noise. And also you can see that this particular one has that bucktail. It's been a little bit thinned out, so it, it, you got to retrieve it a little bit faster. And then of course that um, nice treble hook. So this is a great lure to use, whether you're musky fishing or whether you're casting for pike. And a lot of times you'll get big bass on it as well. You know what, Reagan? This is a bass. Yes, small All right. Mode. Nice one, Italo. Now, do a lot of your customers get bass when they're fishing for pike and just these structure areas? Absolutely, all happens all the time. Targeting pike, especially, we get a lot of bass caught. You ever seen a muskie come up and trying to get a bass? Once before. Is that right? It's exciting. Oh, he's gonna jump. I'm amazed. You know, they've got so much energy. The sonar is saying 58.1 degrees. So you might have to walk up here. I'm sorry, because I've got the electric. Is the boat going to swim around? I mean, this isn't a monster, but come on, you got to admit. Nice guy. It's a nice, nice smallmouth. Yeah, and you're being very careful. We're trying not to get the trebles into the net. Good net job. Yeah, that fish will go probably about 16 inches. See if he doesn't thrash. You know, I tell people, you can tell fish are aggressive when they get the front hook of a crankbait or a lure in their mouth. And this one has the front hook in its mouth and the other one just tagged it in the bottom. So he's got two hooks right in the roof. And that's actually one of the best places to hook a fish because they're not going to get off. It's a very tough part of the mouth. So let me just hold that up for you. Isn't that a nice small mouth? I want you to look at the colors. You know, that's a saying that I said years ago. When you come up here, especially to the west arm, of Lake Nipissing and you stay at Mashinun's Lodge, the fishing is so good. Look how healthy the fish are. That guy's, they call him a bronze back and you can see why. Just the picture perfect smallmouth. Just gonna get him back in the water. Nice little release. These guys have so much, ooh, that is cold water. They've got so much energy. He's gonna just take off. Come on, there you go. There he goes. Now you know, it's kind of neat. I said to Reagan just a few minutes ago, he's casting a large Vibrex spinner and I'm casting a crankbait and switching to a Husky Jerk. Now this particular crankbait is made by Rapala. It's part of their Dives 2 series flat. And this is the number seven flat. The reason they call it flat, look, if I hold it like this upside down, you can see how narrow that body is. Also, it has a very unique lip. If you look at the lip here, it doesn't have those rounded edges. I call this a coffin lip. See how they've got this cut, almost like the shape of a coffin? When you combine that shape of lip with this body, this lure has a very nice side-to-side -side action. Reagan just made a comment about water temperature. Nice, nice fish. Nice fish. fish. Hold on, you know what? I'm gonna bring him around to this side. Oh, good thing my electric is off. Man, is this fight thing fighting hard. Um, because we're fishing bass. this creek. Oh, oh nice you, towel. You, <laughs> awesome. Nice hey, come, on, come on, <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Give me another, <laughs> give me another, okay. <laughs> Very nice bass. Okay, why don't we show the viewers? Let's see what they think. Let me see here. <sighs> Good thing we got a big net. Thank you, Reagan. Now I'm gonna just try to get that out without hurting anybody, and I'll let you do the honors on that. There's the pliers. Now let me just, can you see this? Is that a nice large mouth or what? That is a chunky fish. Does he fit in the frame? Let me move him a little bit so that he doesn't go out of frame. That is a nice large mouth. That fish was in about four feet of water, and uh, he nailed that thing so hard. He had the front hook in his mouth, and then the back hook 
the, the front hook came out and he was just hooked with the back hook. But isn't that a gorgeous fish? Look at it. Nice dark green. You know, they call smallmouth green bass and largemouth black bass sometimes, but this guy is just gorgeous. I love the colors what of the fish What a healthy looking here. fish. Unbelievable. I mean, you can get everything here. This is awesome. We've gotten the pike, smallmouth, largemouth. I'm waiting for you to get a musky, walleye. Just yeah. after this cold front. We're, we're in it. We're yeah, actually we are in the, the cold tail front. End. So this is yeah. amazing. You know, we've been humbled the last two days because it was a tough fish. Plus, I got soaked yesterday, you know, and it rained again this morning. But this is awesome. That's how good the fishing is here at Maskinunge Lodge. We're in Nipissing's West Arm. And you know what? I think anybody can catch a fish that size if they come out here and just cast lures. Could That's have been mine nice tallow. That's right. You beat me to it. That's the nice thing about <laughs> fishing up here in the West Arm. That's the nice thing about having the electric. You can really control the boat. Tail just at the end. <laughs> 20 inches. Nice. Good fish, eh? Yeah, very nice good fish. Nice 20 inch large mouth. A cold front large mouth. Look at one more time. Look at the size of that mouth. Uh, no, I'm not putting my fist in. Gorgeous colors. Actually, those bars that you're seeing on the side of the body, I call stress marks. Because he's saying, what are you going to do with me? I'm too big to eat. Okay. Yeah, he feels, he feels good. It's a, it's a fish on a crankbait. Nice fish. Haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's a nice oh, bass. Yeah. Let me good get the bass, net. Good bass. Yeah, let me get the net. Hold on to him. Keep that rod high. Keep the pressure on. You know, there comes the coach. Okay. Want to land him on this side? Here. Here yeah. We go. You know what? And he goes. These are quality fish. Wow. All right, it's all. Oh, here we go. Oh, I see you changed to that flat I did. floor. Here, I'm gonna let you hold it. You do the honors. Bait's working today. And look at the viewers can see what we're fishing every once in a while. I think that guy went down after he hit your bait because you probably had a clean bait, right? I did, I just yeah. cleaned it off. First yep. couple of cranks, nailed Good fish. it. Now, they say that uh, lodge owners are on holidays most of the time, is that true? This Here, is a, this let is me, a, we want to see if you're lying or telling a, the truth. This is about the third time I fished all year at Tallo. How did you get out three times? I thought most lodge owners are like trapped between I, maintenance and, and doing plumbing. I, and, got, I got lucky this year, what can I say? Awesome. I can't get over how gorgeous the colors are, nice and black. Nice fish. You know what, I gotta get right. a picture of you with that fish. Hold on a sec here, I got my camera right here. Just to prove that lodge owners actually do get out. Wow. Even if it only is three times a year. Now I've heard, I'm gonna put it on outdoor. Does that sound okay? Yep. Outdoor is mountains, flowers? It's the mountains, yeah. It's the mountains. Yep. Actually, I see mountains and I don't need a go. flash on. No. Nope. Okay, now okay. I heard if you hold them out towards me a little bit with like, one hand only. Like, like this? Yeah, one hand only. Yeah, I mean, okay. It looks bigger. Now, I don't know. Do you think that really works? We'll find out. How's it Sexy look? Sexy fish. Okay, I we got it. it. This is good. Okay, if you want, you can just release it, put it back in. Well done. I saw the hook set. You weren't messing around. No, that was a solid hook set. Ugh. Look, at right beside the lily pad. That's so ba bassish. Off he goes. You know what I mean? Reagan, guess what? Doing Another this, one. twitching, twitching a crankbait in shallow water is uh, working okay. Oh, wow! Can you believe this? Nice fish, Italo. Can you believe how good the fishing is at your lodge? <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> you know, we're starting to get giddy here. Yeah! Wow! Nice you bass, Italo. That's not a bad bass. Not bad okay, at give all. Me wow. Give me three. Give me three. All right. Here we go. Beautiful. Man, that's as big or bigger than the yep. other one we got. Isn't that something, eh? Great fish. Sometimes, you know, when you get one, it's worth hanging around. And I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah. yeah that, we saw that, this that's guy a, for a while. That, that's Great a five fish. pounder. Did he want it? I think so. He took it deep. <laughs> so I gotta, I'm gonna walk to the back so the right. viewers get a good look. And I gotta explain to them this technique. You know, um, I learned from years of tournament fishing that a lot of times you fish a large area and you'll find a, a real high concentration of bass in a very small area. And that, that fish is five pounds. He's a solid fish. Very solid fish. And you look where we are. You see where the front of the boat is. That's where I hooked the fish. I'm tossing this crankbait five to 10 feet away from me, giving it a few twitches. Now, the reason I can do that, it's got a shallow running lip. It only dives down to about five feet, but it's also suspending 
this thing is in the tissue of the mouth and it's hooked really well. And you know for the other one I need the pliers because he's got, you can see that crankbait. I don't want to hurt him. But that's a chunky bass. So the funny thing is we worked a couple of acres here. Didn't get one fish to rise and I don't think they were there. And we saw this pattern yesterday morning when we were trying a different area. Okay, what a trophy. Man, I'm impressed. Reagan, these are trophy fish. That is a slab. Do they ever have bass tournaments up here? Not too often, actually, Talo. It's, uh, it's amazing. Everyone seems to target uh, walleye and other species, but uh, the bass fishing is really underrated on Nipissing. Because I think, I mean, th those largemouth are like tournament fish. Absolutely. Now, i got to share with the viewer. So this, remember, this is a Rapala dives tube. It's a four. It's, it's the flat series, so it's not the round one. So in a way, that's why you get the flash, and you'll see it in a minute. So it's flat, it has a wide body profile, uh, short lip with that coffin cut on, on both sides. So this is what I've been doing. It's almost too simple. I'm just gonna toss it in front of you. I may even get a fish. So because it's neutral buoyancy, if I give it a little twitch with more of my rod tip up, it's almost like fishing a jig but you'll see when I stop it, it stays in one spot. So because we're in lily pads here in rocks, I can't make a long cast and crank it. So all I'm doing is casting it out, a couple twitches, and you can see that the line is going loose. So I, I'm letting the lure work from side to side. I'm not, I'm not retrieving it and trying to work it towards the surface. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by MD Marine Insurance. Boat insurance made easy. I'm Regan Thompson, this is my wife Goldie and our dog Barney, and we're the owners of Masconage Lodge on the west arm of Lake Nipissing. Uh, we're new owners to Masconage Lodge, we've been here for six months now. Um, what we love about the area is that it has fantastic fishing for walleye, bass, muskie and pike. We offer 11 beautiful housekeeping cottages, fish cleaning station, 13 rental boats, and overall just a great area. We're only 3.5 hours north of Toronto. So it's a short commute for those coming from southwestern Ontario. We, we also have a sandy beach for our kids and many other things for families. So Lake Nipissing is one of Ontario's largest lakes. It's very shallow and windswept, making it very productive. Many of our guests who come here catch a high number of fish and also some very large fish. Just recently we caught a 53 inch muskie. We've had several in the 50 inch plus category already caught this season. A lot of the people that come here um, have said that they feel like they're very welcomed as soon as they pull up into the parking lot. And they feel like our cottages, and we have a lot of people that come back year after year and they just feel like it's a home away from home. We'd like to invite you up personally so that you can see how beautiful the West Arm of Lake Nipissing is in this part of Ontario. And uh, hopefully we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming season. You know, a good way to fish when you get into thick mats, primarily for largemouth bass, but sometimes you get surprises of pike, even big pike. When you get into waters like this where there's scattered lily pads and thicker lily pads, using a topwater frog, and now, you know, frogs have really come a long way. It used to be that you could only get like a, a solid plastic frog. I'm holding up one of the new Trigger X frogs, and this particular one is a hollow one, so you can see I can push on it, might even have, doesn't have much water in it. The unique thing about this hollow frog is that it's got a weight at the back and on the bottom, so that when it sits at rest, the head of the frog is up like a real frog, and I'm going to show you in just a moment. Also, instead of having plastic legs, it has living rubber, which looks a lot more tantalizing. The third thing is that it looks very lifelike. This is one with a white belly, and it has like a leopard frog color, very bright. And you can see that it's got two hooks that are parallel to the top of the lure. So you can go over pretty thick vegetation and it won't get stuck, but as soon as a bass grabs it in his mouth and collapses that, those two hooks are exposed. You can hook the fish. The key to landing fish 
and hooking them up using these frogs, whether they're solid or hollow core, is not to set the hook when you get the strike. You have to wait until you feel the fish on. And a lot of times I actually let the fish swim a little distance where I see my rod bending, then I set the hook. The fish won't want to drop this frog. It's not like hitting a spoon or a spinner that's hard because it's all soft. So when it grabs it in its mouth, it really feels it. So I'm just going to drop it into the water just close to us so you can see how it sits. It actually sits like a real frog. And if you give it an action with your rod tip up, it actually comes up like a real frog and across any kind of cover. We're just having a little discussion about, you know, making long casts looks great, but when you're dealing with a lot of cover like this, it's not good for hook setting. See if I can get this guy out of the pads. Oh man, they get caught up on those pads and then you lose them. Is he still on there? I don't know if you can lunge at him because those pads, he's not a bad bass. Man, this, you gotta, have you thought about operating a lodge up here? What did that bass have for lunch? Trigger X frog. That's why it's so important to pause that split second, keep reeling, wait till you feel the fish, and then nail the hook. So he ate it. So the one nice thing about these things is they're soft. And hopefully he's only got one hook in them, because, yeah, perfect. Look at Here, look at this. That's what, I took his meal away. Let me just spread the legs so it looks nice here. I took his meal away. There's the fog. I'm using a black one, because I'm partial to dark colors when it's overcast, because I really believe that it casts more of a silhouette, because black is a lack of color. Reagan's got on that frog that's kind of chartreuse. It's nice and bright and both can work really well. So this guy hit, he was back right in the pencil reeds. That's amazing. I mean, a lot of guys like to fish bass. And you know what? I'm impressed for this time of year with the conditions that we've had. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Suffix. Always use the best line. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Defend products. Eco-friendly protection from biting insects. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. But the pattern that seems to have been working, that we've been doing well the last three days, we've had a couple of days of pre-fishing, was to fish these transition places, not into deeper water. So we're actually fishing close to deep water. So behind us, you can see these rock faces and islands. We've got water that's over 30 feet deep. And in the summertime, you can probably get walleye and bass fishing any of the points and rocks and so on. But right now, a lot of these shallower bays, just like this one, you can see all the lush lily pads that are back there and the weeds that come out of it is a really good pattern to fish. So we're looking for the fish that are coming out of the shallow water because some of the vegetation is dying and it's using up oxygen. So they're coming out to the edge and eventually they'll migrate into deeper water and winter there. 